NATO expressed the neoconservative ideas in its declaration in the 2024 summit in Washington. I find the declaration to be provocative, uh, dangerous for the world, or I should say it's the neoconservative idea that has been dominating U.S. foreign policy for the past 30 years. And NATO is an instrument of U.S. hegemony. So NATO looks at countries that are powerful and that don't want the U.S. to run the world as adversaries or even enemies. And in this regard, Russia and China are viewed as adversaries or enemies because Russia and China are advocating a multipolar world, not a U.S.-led world. NATO should have nothing to do with East Asia. And the fact that NATO is expanding its mission in East Asia is a reflection that the original purpose of NATO, which was a defensive purpose against a, a potential Soviet uh, invasion of Western Europe, has been subverted by the U.S. neoconservatives to make NATO serve the purpose of U.S. hegemony. I consider it a delusional policy. The U.S. cannot dominate in Asia. China is powerful. China has its security interests. And the U.S. has no business aiming for primacy or hegemony in Asia. The whole idea is very, very dangerous. I do not think that Japan will officially become a member of NATO. Japan is not in the North Atlantic. It's not in Europe. It's not even arguably a member of NATO. But NATO is talking about opening offices or interconnections with the Japanese military, the Korean military, and so forth. If Japan has good sense, if Korea has good sense, and if China's diplomacy is successful, the countries of East Asia will recognize that the United States should not divide them, should not try to make a Cold War in Asia. The United States wants a division. The war is not between Russia and Ukraine. The war is between Russia and the United States. It happens to be taking place on Ukrainian soil. The United States unilaterally abandoned the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty in 2002 and began to place missile systems in Poland and Romania very close to Russia's borders. It's one of the reasons why this war is so dangerous. These are the two biggest nuclear superpowers. They each have 6,000 nuclear warheads. And it's a bit of a puzzle why the Europeans are so silent. As I said, in part because they're part of a U.S.-led uh, political machine. They also feel the U.S. is their only nuclear umbrella, so-called. In other words, a, a nuclear deterrent because these are not nuclear powers in general. But I think that they miss the main point. Uh, which is that a more cooperative, much less aggressive uh, NATO policy would make the European countries far more secure and would make Ukraine secure because this U.S.-led hegemonic approach, in other words, trying to dominate, is only creating bigger and bigger risks in Europe itself. The problem is that we are talking about two nuclear superpowers, uh, both of which are determined to, quote, win, rather than to settle this war at the negotiating table. And so there's the ever-present risk that this war will escalate into complete nuclear disaster. We have never been closer to nuclear war than we are today. There's a Confucian idea called Shu, reciprocity. And that is what we need. The United States should not do unto Russia and China as they would not want Russia and China to do unto them. Just as the United States would not like China or Russia to have a military base or missiles 
uh, in Mexico along the border with the U.S., the U.S. should understand it should not put its missiles and military bases along the border of Russia and China. Confucius would understand this very well. Uh, this is just the golden rule. And if we could get behavior that way, the world would be far safer than it is today.